All right, so in this video, we are going to be going through different um, polygon tools or mesh tools. Um, so I'm going to switch over to a new scene. Yes, I'll save. And I'm going to switch this to the modeling menu just so you can get an idea of the different menus that are up there. And this one will also show. Okay, so here's the four main polygon menus that are out there. Uh, we can use uh, any number of these together at the same time. Uh, as we've discussed before, those three main ones, which are uh, beveling, uh, inserting edge loops, which is right here, and then extruding, which is right there. Okay, but there's a lot more things that you may um, want to see. So we're going to cover some of those. Uh, now, we also are going to cover ones we never want to use. Okay, now I'm going to say never because you're a student. Uh, you can't pick up a lightsaber until you've reached this level. Okay, so booleans don't use. Okay, uh, we're not there using booleans. It takes a lot of work to clean it up to use a booleans. So don't use a booleans or booleans. Okay, so let's just start with uh, some of these major ones. We're going to start in the first menu here. Okay, so this is the mesh menu, and I'm just going to keep it open so we can see what happens with it. And I'm just going to create a polygon. Now, all these tools work with polygons, not NURBS. Those are different kinds of surfaces. Um, these will work with any of these uh, pieces here. So I'm going to go to just a regular sphere, and I'm going to zoom in on it <coughs> and kind of frame myself up. So first, um, you'll notice that these are kind of joined together, like there's a uh, three things, then there's a slash, then there's four things and a slash. So basically all these are kind of uh, joined uh, in a grouping, a similar grouping, okay? So I'm going to go to faces here, and that's, you know, one of the indicators that this is polygon because it says faces, vertex, edge, those are polygon uh, terms. And I'm just going to grab a bunch of these, okay? And there we go. Now let's say that I wanted to pull these off of this surface. Um, I, I can't use combine, obviously. Uh, you would think separate, but it's not, okay? Um, and it's actually not in this menu, and I wish it was like right there, but it's not. So I'm going to switch back to my modeling, go to Edit Mesh, and way down here at the bottom, this is where I'm going to extract this, okay? These are kind of like, I don't know, uh, different tools that are out here. These should really be like over here, and these poke and wedge should actually be like up there, which is weird. Anyway, so I'm going to extract these faces, okay? And then I'm going to go back to Object Mode. And then you'll notice that I have two different pieces, okay? Now, what this does is I'm going to hit Undo. Click too many times, and now I have to undo a lot. There we go. I'm gonna grab some more faces. I'm gonna go back to Edit Mesh. Go back to oops, not what I hit there. Extract Option Box. I'm gonna turn this Separate Duplic uh, Extracted Faces off. Okay, so I'm gonna hit Extract. Back to Object Mode. Okay, so now there's the difference. So this is one shape. You'll see in the Outliner we have one shape. And if I go to let's say three, you'll notice that we have. Uh, this is actually acting like uh, multiple surfaces. You'll see where these two things are at. Um, it basically looks like there's an overlap there. And if I were to go to my faces and double click, it's selecting just that one, okay? Now, if I go back to object mode and click on this, and then I hit separate, now it'll separate them. So this piece, and this piece, and this piece. So any polygons that are uh, not connected so these weren't connected because they were extracted, still part of the same polygon object, but extracted. If I click that separate, it'll actually pull them apart, okay? Now if I look in the outliner, you'll see I have polysurface one, polysurface two, polysurface three. And then there's also this transform and this p-sphere one, okay? So you'll see we get these other ones. When I delete history, that transform goes away, okay? Uh, now, if I wanted to put these back together, that's where this other one comes in. So separate separates polygons that are not connected. Combine puts them back together. Okay. Now notice over here in the outliner that we have each one of these has their own transform, their own polysurface. When I delete history on this, all that goes away. Okay. Now this is still not connected uh, together. If I go back to faces and I double click, you'll see it only selects that middle section. Okay, this is where I'm going to use another tool, which is under Edit Mesh, and it's called Merge, right there. 
And I encourage you, I invite you, without a written invitation, of course, it's verbal, so RSVP, um, open up the options for each tool. Anytime you see a box next to that, open the options and see what you have there. Because uh, sometimes you'll find like a wealth of different options you may want to set before you even get into the tool. So this one is merging vertices. And what it's going to do is it's going to find any vertices that are on top of each other. So if I go to vertex and I click this one and I move it, you'll see that there's an opening right there. And basically if I move it, you can see there's a vertex here and then there's also a vertex there. Okay. I'm going to undo. Maybe I'm going to undo. There we go. So I'm going to grab all these, uh, I'm going to have to grab anything really, just grab the whole object or vertices, and I'm just going to say merge. So now what that's going to do is it's going to go through anything that was within that distance threshold, it merges it together, it welds it together, okay? Uh, we use that tool inside Cinema, it was called Weld. I'm going to go to Object Mode, click off, click on this, and hit 3. And you'll see that we don't get any of that weirdness we were getting before. If I go to Faces and I double click, I select the entire thing. Okay, now one thing we will notice, there's still this like weird line here, okay? Now, um, even though these are combined, even though we have merged these together, um, we don't have this continuous flowing surface. If I were to hit three and deselect, you'll see it does look nice and smooth. So, you know, we could kind of ignore that, but let's fix it. So uh, under Mesh Display, I'm going to go to um, this area, Harden Edge, Soften Edge, Soft Harden Edge. So in Cinema, there was an option called Fong, and you would kind of control the edge hardness that way. Um, same thing here. So I'm going to hit um, these two options are the same as this one, except this one you can set the number in the option box. So I'm going to leave it at 30, which is the default. Hit Soft Hard. And now if I click off, you'll see that now this looks basically like the exact sphere uh, that we originally started with, okay? So uh, combining, separating, uh, you'll do these things quite often. Sometimes I'll have a surface that I just need to like delete, flip over, do whatever to, and blah, blah, blah. And that's when I'll do it. Now, any of these tools like merging or bridging or anything like that, they have to be combined. They have to be part of that same shape. So just as a, for instance, let's delete the sphere. Let's create a cube. And let's say that I duplicate the cube and I scoot it over. So I want to bridge uh, between these two cubes. So if I grab both of these cubes, um, and if I just want to bridge, it would just give me an error. Okay, maybe it'll try to do something, but it just won't work. So I'm going to hit combine. Now I'm not merging right here because they're not merged. They're not you know anywhere near each other. So I'm going to go to face. I'm going to click this face. Shift click that face. Go to mesh. Sorry, add a mesh, and then go to bridge. And now it'll bridge those two faces together, okay? Uh, before they were connected or combined, it would not allow me to do that, right? So that's what uh, combine and separate do. Um, sometimes I'll use separate, but it's kind of like a random, uh, a random thing. I really don't use that one too often, but I'll use combine a lot. Um, fill hole, it's exactly what it sounds like. If I have a hole in this shape, hit fill hole, it covers it. Uh, things to be aware of with this fill hole. Let's say that I delete some wonky faces like this, and then I go to fill hole. It will fill the hole there, but it does not create nice geometry. In order to have nice geometry, stuff that works, all of these edges need to be connected somewhere so that every single face has four sides. So this face has four edges attached to it. This face has like however many that is. You can count them in your spare time. Um, so if this was the case, I have this face that I chunked out. I would then go to uh, Mesh Tools. I would go to Multi-Cut, and I would click on this point here. Now, the Multi-Cut allows me to individually draw in each shape, okay? When I'm done with the one shape, I hit Enter, and it lets me go to the next one. Click here, click there, Enter, click here, click there. And this, you know, it feels like boring, like, oh, there's more clicking. Uh, but the results of it will be uh, fantastico. Okay, so now we're getting closer. Okay, so you can see how the shape is actually feels more like a shape. Uh, now I just need to go across this. Now if I go here, uh, this one's going to connect there. You'll notice how it 
you know, it doesn't feel like it's even. Okay, like how wide this is. This is basically just taking the shortest distance from this point straight through these to that point. That's what it does. So same thing here. I'll click this. I'll click that. Hit enter. And you'll see it does the same thing. Okay. Now let's go to the mesh tool multi-cut options. And... Common, common selection tools. Well, that's not what I'm on. I want the multi-cut tools. There we go. Uh, you can also double click this to bring up any tools, whatever tool you're on. Uh, so snap step, smoothing angle, edge flow. So I can try that. Sometimes that'll give you pretty good results if I click this and then click that. Uh, sometimes it'll create a nice result of how it blends from one to the other. You can see how it popped there for a second. Same thing here. I'm going to click this, click that, hit Y. You'll see it pop. And that's just it trying to maintain a uh, nice flow around the shape. There we go. Okay, and it's using the shapes around it. It's using the curves around it to get that. Okay, now this one doesn't want to play nice. Let's see. This, that, nope. See, it doesn't like it. So I may have to go like in the middle here, then click there, then click there, and then hit enter. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to reset the tool. I'm going to close it and switch back to my move tool. So now I've filled the face in, and now I have quads all over here. So um, that is the multi-cut tool, uh, which obviously works hand-in-hand -hand with the fill hole. Okay. Um, reduce, we don't reuse for this. Um, smoothing. So if I hit three, this is a preview of a smooth. Okay, if I hit one, oops, looks like I messed up. Let's look at that. So these two edges I missed. If I hit three, I'll get this like weird, oops, weird thing right there. So I'm going to hit uh, vertex. I'm going to click these two, and then I'm going to go to that edit mesh merge. And if I have just two selected, it'll just merge those together. If I had more, it would look for that tolerance. Okay, so now it looks nice, except I also missed these bottom ones. Uh, OCD Sean is going to just take care of this real quick. Keep in mind, OCD Sean only exists um, in 3D and on the computer. Um, he doesn't exist when cleaning. So just keep that in mind. Whoops. If you make a mistake, you can hit the backspace key. And that will just undo that last point you put in. And switch to the move tool, back to object mode, hit three. Oops, see I missed a couple down here too. And I'm just going to delete this anyway, but this is going to annoy me if I don't fix it. There's a random point right there. I'm just going to delete that. A random point there. All right. Coast is clear. Okay. So, um, anyway. So, if I were to hit three, this is a real smooth. Okay. This smooth actually activates it. Okay. So, preview smooth, actual smooth. When we do an actual smooth, we get the divisions. So sometimes as I'm modeling, um, I want, we hit undo, I want to edit the points between here, but there are no points. Instead of just adding one loop, sometimes I'll smooth it out, then I get divisions all over the place, and then I can go ahead and start to tweak the points manually. Okay? Uh, so that's sometimes I'll do that. Um, you really want to make sure that you're ready to smooth before going into the smooth state. If I was still working on this back half, that could cause some serious issues if I wanted to keep a lower resolution here and a higher resolution there. Typically, you're going to work lower resolution and then increase your resolution as needed. Okay, so you don't want to jump into something like this. You want to stay as rough as you can. Um, cool. So triangulate does exactly what you think it would, um, unless you've never heard the word triangulate. But it's going to make everything into triangles. Okay. Now the reason for this is if you're going into a gaming engine or a real-time engine, um, they're going to typically triangulate your stuff. Uh, most of the time, though, I don't worry about that because the software does it. I usually worry about this one, which is quadrangulate, which typically does an okay job of undoing that. Okay, You'll see in some spots like here, it didn't know what to do, so it just like left those there. Um, and then I would go through and manually clean that up Okay, so it's easier to work with. Triangles are not easy to work with. But when you go into a real-time engine or when you hit the render buttons, um, it actually converts it to triangles and then renders. Okay. Let's delete that. All right. Next on our list 
is mirror. So I'm going to grab these. And let's say that I did one of those things. Okay. And let's pretend that I didn't forget these. Cool. All right. And then while I was over here, I also did some modifications, grabbing different faces, uh, extruding. Extruding. Perfect. All right. Good enough. Uh, so let's say I wanted to take these shapes and I want to put them on there. Exact. Okay. So that's where mirror comes in. Uh, back in my day when we were walking uphill to school, um, we didn't have just a single mirror function. It was like several steps. Now they have a single mirror function. Um, options again, take a look at them and see. Uh, one of the biggest things that you may want or may not want is, you know, you may not want to cut the geometry. Uh, or you uh, most likely want to change which axis is, is there. So two things that typically I'll always change or need to look at is which axis is this mirroring on, okay? So right now my x-axis is this direction, my z-axis is that direction, and the y is up and down. So if I mirrored it this way, the top would mirror to the bottom. If I mirrored it this way, the left would mirror to the right. If I mirrored it this way, then this piece would go to that side, okay? So typically, like, I know in this case it's going to be x. And then we have to look at the direction. Are we mirroring this side to that side or are we mirroring this side to that side? Okay, so all this can be changed uh, or most of this can be changed. I'm just gonna hit mirror and you'll see that it does that. Okay, now it increased obviously the size of that uh, tremendously. Uh, it worked, obviously we have this here and that there and you might say that's fine. I can just grab these points and just you know, push these in and then do the same thing on that side. But there's a way to do it. Let's do it the correct way. So I'm going to go to the attribute editor just so I can uh, have the options up here a little bit easier than just in my channel box, but these are in the channel box too. Okay. So here's cut geometry. So you could obviously turn that on and off. If you have it on, uh, off, you get this. I don't want that. Uh, we also have the mirror axis position. So if I were to turn my grid on, you'll see that my grid goes right here. Let me undo. There we go. Uh, but the center of this is actually probably over there. Okay. So let me mirror it again. If I change my axis to object, and let's hit undo again. Some of these options you need to make sure that they're set inside the options here before you click. Object, mirror, nope. Uh, and sometimes they just don't play nice because they, they, they get angry, I think, is what happens. Uh, but anyway, this should have flipped it along that, okay? Now you'll notice that I can drag this arrow and still move the amount that it's uh, offsetting, which is nice because you can create some really cool shapes uh, based off of that. Like I could you know, pull this out like that, and now I have these like two ring areas here, okay? Um, I could also do some twisting, okay? I can't go too far, but I can go a little bit. Same thing this way, I can rotate this a little bit there and get some neat shapes. Um, I can switch my direction, so here's the x-axis. Let's set this back to world. And it's not letting me change my mirror direction. Let's go close this. Uh, probably because I moved the axis. Let's undo. There we go. Nope. For whatever reason, it doesn't want me to change it here. So that's fine because I'm going to just come into the channel box and I'll change it that way. There we go. So if I hit plus, you'll see it does this. Okay. And if I hit minus, it does this. Now the plus is doing that because it's mirroring it like around this direction. Uh, and that's where the original one was. Okay, so we just had that part, so it's flipping this part onto that side. Uh, so, cool tool uh, using mirror. Um, always double check your stuff and make sure that you know you don't have any weird stuff happening with it. Uh, sometimes you can get, you know, if my, let me undo that. If my geometry was kind of rotated funky like this, and then I hit mirror. Um, you know, it did a pretty good job there, but let's switch this to world. Okay, and now we get this, right? So that's where you may want to play with those settings to uh, make sure you have it lined up the exact way you want it lined up. Uh, don't need to worry about these yet. Don't need to worry about smooth proxy yet. We'll get into all that. Uh, let's jump to edit mesh. All right, so uh, add divisions. This is gonna do um, like a smooth, it's gonna add a bunch of divisions, uh, but the difference is it won't smooth it out. Okay, it just adds divisions. So I want to keep like this exact shape nice and blocky. I hit add divisions. 
you'll see how it keeps the blocky shape. It just added extra divisions there. And if I scoochie over here, I can just control the amount of divisions. Okay. If I want to get rid of it, I can undo or I can set my divisions to zero. And that way it just basically like this isn't doing anything. Uh, I'm going to put this back at one. I can change the divisions just in one direction. If I go to my options, set this to linear, you can see how I can click on um, them in just one direction. Okay, so it's only adding it left and right here. Left and right, it's not adding them vertically. Okay, that adds them vertically, that adds them left and right. Okay, so again, more options inside there. You would never have known it if you didn't pop your head into that area. Uh, we've done bevel. Um, I showed bridge, but just so you can see it uh, again. Uh, let me make a cylinder here. And let me go to the height divisions. And I'm just adding some divisions here so we can emphasize how this works. So the way that uh, bridge works is we go to faces. It'll work with edges too, uh, but faces is typically how I use it. And I'm going to grab two faces. Okay, so I went to wireframe so that I could see through this. I mark weed right there, and then I'm going to hit bridge. And if I hit five, then we can see the um, bridge. There it is. Just connects it. Um, now, this also works with multiple faces. Okay, so Maya is somewhat smart uh, in this respect, uh, but not always. Okay, so let's try this out here. So I'm going to grab those, and I'm going to go to bridge. Hit five, and that did a pretty good job. It went all the way through. Now, let's go further down here let's marquee some more let's pretend that we didn't have you know these two faces selected okay so now we have kind of like a different number and they're also a different height if you look at that uh, let me not select that top one there there we go so now we just have it's funky uh, now let's do bridge and we get an error okay so it just says I don't know what you're doing buddy uh, you need to figure this stuff out Okay, so it just doesn't know. So just be aware that it does have a limit as to how far um, it's letting you adjust things. Uh, you can do a lot, but you know, the software is software. Someone's written it and programmed it and whatever else. All right, now let's look at some of the options for bridge. So I'm gonna grab both of these. I'm gonna combine them so I can bridge. Try it again, there you go. I'm gonna grab the two faces here. I'm gonna grab two faces there. And then I'm going to go to Bridge Options, and I'm going to say Smooth Path, and then hit Apply. Now, this does not look smooth, so let's go to the Attribute Editor. It's such a weird word to say, Attribute Editor. Um, and there's zero divisions. So that's why it looks rough still, because there's zero divisions here. If I were to put in, let's say, uh, 10 divisions, you'll see that we get this whew, somewhat fancy, uh, but it looks like it goes like inside. So let's change the direction. So see, the direction source is plus, direction target is, I don't know, minus. So let's change plus plus. Boom, there we go. Uh, we can also do things like tapering. We can also do things like twisting. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of stuff there. Okay. Um, the twisting feature, uh, I'm using it wrong. I'm thinking of something else. Um, the twisting feature is actually like if this was not lined up correctly. So if like this corner, instead of it going around here and blending to this one, this corner connected to that corner, you could use this twist and it would automatically allow you to adjust that. Okay. Um, and then there's, let's just reset that to zero, this taper curve. Now you'll see these a lot inside Maya, just in the attribute editors. This is basically just like a, uh, a ramp or a gradient. Uh, right now it has one value, just one right there. If I click in here and drag, I can control how that taper happens. So this taper, um, you can see we can adjust the size of it and everything, uh, but this is controlling where exactly is it tapering at. And again, you can get some really cool shapes by doing that. Do you like how I emphasize the word cool there? All right, so let's go back one more time. I'm going to grab these two these two and that was smooth path now this is an extra fancy one smooth path plus curve and smoothing angle bridge i don't know why i said smoothing angle um, and here is this divisions right so i can just click and drag these pop it up i can go to my direction here and it doesn't want me to off to touch it so whatever i'll go back to my attribute editor 
and I'll just adjust it here. Oops, that's the wrong one. Make sure I'm on the correct tab for polybridge. Make sure I'm on the plus. Make sure this is minus. Make sure this is minus. Hmm. All right, so it does not want to play nice. So I'm going to leave this as minus, uh, plus and minus, I guess, or plus and plus. Uh, but let's look at what else we have here. So I'm going to go to wireframe, and what we shall see is right in the center of this, let's go to object mode and click and drag right in the center, there's a curve. And this curve controls the direction. So here, uh, up top, this just blends. That's all it's trying to do. Uh, oops. But in the bottom, we have a curve. So this is just like a path inside of Illustrator, except it's in 3D, so it's a thousand times better. I'm going to right-click out into space here, You'll notice the different options. I'm going to go to Control Vertex. And in here, I'll get these purple points. They're not on the actual curve itself, but think of Illustrator, um, the handlebars. That's what we're adjusting here. So if I click this and drag it, I'm adjusting like the handlebars of this. So I'm going to go over here where we have some handlebar points that are way off, and I'm just going to adjust where they're at. Same thing here. And you can see I can manually adjust how that's positioned. And what's cool about this also is that I can take this and I can go like that and I can take this and I can go like that. And there's no way that just the default, you know, bridge would have gotten me there. Um, and now what's even uh, more awesome about this is that I'm editing this curve, which has fewer points. If I go back into the bridge and I, let's say, made this 50 divisions, you'll see that that still maintains that nice flowing curve. Okay. Um, if I were to try to go into this area and grab these points and move them, yes, I definitely could do that if I wanted to. Um, but I have to make sure I have enough divisions to keep it smooth. Um, here I have enough to keep it smooth, but I don't have enough to work with. If I try to edit any of these, you'll see the second I start tweaking this, it's going to look wonky. And this is going to take a long time to go ahead and uh, tweak that. Okay. So sometimes I'll use that bridge with a curve. Sometimes I'll use regular bridge. Uh, it all depends on, you know, how I woke up that morning. And go to a new scene. I'm starting to get some history going. Uh, circularize. One of my favorite tools, by far. Um, again, years and years ago, uh, we did not have such bounty when it came to these tools. Plain. I can't find anything. Oops. I'm going to turn my grid off because that's going to annoy me. There we go. Okay. So let's say I want a perfect circle cut out of the center of this area right here. So I'm going to grab a nice amount of, of faces here. I want a circle right there. So circularize. The sound effect is not included. You have to add that your own, yourself. Uh, so there it is. That's awesome. Back uh, when I first got into Maya, if we wanted this, we'd have to move, manually move all the points to get that lined up. And the fact that I can click and that works is awesome. And then I can extrude and then I can push that down. And then I can go here and make sure I double click all these edges. And then I can add a bevel and let's control drag that and then drag that, hit three and whew, look at that. Perfect. Now limitations. If I were to go to a sphere, let's say, and I go to faces here and I were to grab some faces there, and I hit circularize, it definitely works. Okay, it's flat, um, and it does need some adjustment. So there is a radial offset, oops, not radial offset, twist, there it is. Uh, if I click and drag this, it will adjust the position of it. So I may need to adjust it to create this like Spider-Man logo. And then if I go to radial offset, that will squeeze it in a little bit more. And then if I go to normal offset, that will push it in or out. Okay. Um, I could also relax the interior on or off if I needed to. Sometimes, you know, it's one of those things where you don't really need it, but sometimes you want it. Uh, I can also add divisions to keep this nice and smooth. Uh, but that's just adding extra stuff that I don't really want. Okay. And then again, everything else works the same. I can extrude, push it in, extrude, push it in. Click around here. Because of the kind of surface that it, uh, curve that it is, you do have to grab all the way around. Then I hit three and nice okay now this is not a perfect circle anymore or a sphere anymore you'll see that we do get some like puckering in these areas so just use this kind of like sparingly but sometimes it's the only way and then you'd have to come in and maybe just adjust some of these points like just pull those points out 
or add another row of points right here or you know just tweak some stuff okay uh, but I use that a lot uh, collapse I don't use that connect uh, don't use detach okay so I'm gonna grab these faces I'm gonna hit detach and that did nothing did it yeah it did uh, detach now I go to separate now it's detached okay so if you remember from my earlier uh, demonstration if I went to extracts option box and I had this you know separate turned off that's detach I don't know why there's two uh, maybe people do that quite often uh, I typically don't so uh, I don't use detach I use the extract and then I just turn it off <clears throat> so uh, or leave it on because typically if I extract something I also want it separated um, uh, but that's what detach does extrude we know merge we know uh, merge to center okay so i mentioned before if i let's say i have uh, some opening here i have two vertices i can hit merge it merges those to the center okay uh, if i have more than two selected so like all four of these uh, and i hit merge that's not gonna do anything but if i hit merge to center it will merge all of those to the center okay it's kind of like forcing it into there um, now be careful anytime you use these tools because if I you know just go like this and I say merge to center that looks like it worked but as I spin around oopsie daisies I did that too okay so that's what that is um, transform I don't use that too often we'll ignore that symmetrize we don't need to worry about that right now average vertices is a good one so let's delete let's go to a cube to some subdivisions here, some subdivisions there. There we go. Okay. So let's say that I just take all of these faces here and I were to hit average vertice. What we're going to see is uh, those vertices are actually going to be collapsing in on themselves. Now that seemed kind of weird, like why would I want that? Uh, but if I need a nice smooth transition, um, average vertice is a nice way to basically take your points that you have here and even out the spacing is what it's doing okay so even though it looks like they're all spaced the same um, this point is actually further from that point so average vertice will try to bring this point closer to that one and then these points closer to that one and we'll get this kind of stuff usually what I get usually when I'm using this kind of thing let's say that I added uh, a cube here I added a subdivision in the height like so I extrude I pull this out I've added a couple divisions here I grab this another extrude I make sure I'm in the right tool and I insert some edge loops down here okay now when I hit three uh, all of the divisions are kind of bunched here so I may want to grab all of these points make sure I grabbed them all correctly and just average them out some and I can get some neat shapes um, or uh, what I can do is just help blend these surfaces together because if I have too many things kind of like tight like right on top of that right on top of that right on top of that and then I were to hit three I may get this kind of like weird pinch right there and so I don't want to move it necessarily by my by hand I may just want to grab that and average that out and sometimes it takes some finessing just maybe you know average it and then scale it up or adjust the points after and now that doesn't look you know, it kind of still looks kind of weird i think i have a line that's like right on top of it there we go cool all right so there's average vertice uh, i've mentioned chamfer before um, it's basically like beveling a vertice so if i go to the vertices and i hit bevel we get that if I go to the vertices and hit chamfer, we get that. So it's the same thing, um, different options. So here we have length, width, and divisions. So if I go to length, uh, I get nothing, sorry, width. Oops. And that's why, excuse me, that's why control comes in handy. You just control drag and it becomes much smoother. There you go. And then you can add divisions if you needed to, but in this case, we really don't need divisions. Um, that's locked anyway. So probably because of the options. Okay, so that's going to do basically the same thing. Cut the corners on there. Um, 
You'll find some neat tricks when you use Champer with some of the other tools. Reorder vertices, don't need to worry about that yet. Uh, this is a super important one. All right, so let's delete. Let's go to Polygon Sphere. And I'm going to go to edges. Now, this is what you have done, maybe, possibly, hopefully not. I don't want these edges here, so I just hit the backspace key and delete them. Now, you'll notice that we have this kind of funky shape happening right there. If I zoom in on the vertices, or on the edges here, and I look at it, you'll see that these edges are actually still separate pieces. Okay? Same thing this way. Do, 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 do. If I go to vertex, you can see the points right there still. So whenever you delete an edge, like thus, you never want to just hit delete because it doesn't delete the vertices. You want to hit, I'm selecting that one, there you go. You want to hit uh, delete vertex or edge and hit or hit control delete. So typically I'll hit control delete and that will give you nice um, ways to delete your edges. Okay. Um, now, if you don't do that and you end up with a surface that has like vertices all over it, this is not going to be easy to work with. It's not going to look nice when it renders. Um, you'll be a, a disappointment. People will laugh at you in public. It's, it's a whole thing. Okay. So make sure when you delete vertices or edges, you use control backspace. Okay. If I do it wrong and I just hit backspace or just hit delete, then I have to go through manually and click all of these or try to marquee them. And then just hit regular delete because I'm basically like doing it, you know, in each one individually. All right, so use that. Um, added edge flow I haven't used yet, so I'm not going to mean, attempt to go over that yet. We don't need to worry about that. We'll get more into that. <clears throat> Flip triangle edge we don't need to worry about. I would imagine it'd be the same as that. Um, so don't worry about any of these other ones in here right now. Uh, duplicate is a fun one because you might need that. Okay, so I'm gonna make this like Star Wars thing here. So I'm gonna grab, I'm kind of lining this up so I can have an easy way to marquee like that. And then I'm gonna extrude, keep faces together off, do a little offset, not that much. There we go. Uh, do another extrude, push that in, and then delete. Okay, so let's say that this is my dome here, and I wanted a piece of glass that would fit all the way inside there. Well, I've just gotten rid of that shape that would have been perfect. Um, but let's say that I want to use this. So I'm going to grab this sphere at the bottom. And I'm going to go to duplicate. Uh, separate, yes. Duplicate. It'll give you this thing. It, you can edit it just like a, a bevel or something or an extrude. I'm just going to go back to object mode. And then try to grab that piece. There it is. And now I'm just going to rotate. Hold down my hotkey to snappy. Uh, maybe scale it in a smidge. And there we go. So now I have this um, piece of glass on the inside of that area. Okay. Now I've done a very simple duplicate, uh, but that can be used for a lot of different things. Um, if I had a very complex shape, I could use that uh, duplicate face, or I could use the extract face and use it for something else. Um, it all depends on what your specific needs are. Sometimes I will even duplicate a surface like so, and then on, let me duplicate it again. Okay. And then on one of these, I'll do some tweaks to it. So just like I did above. Extrude, turn this off. Hit my elbow on my chair. Come on. Extrude that again, push that in, delete it. There we go. And now I have this other one that I can use as my duplicator or my extractor. Now, if I extract this, there it is, and I can just delete this. Or I can just grab everything else and delete everything else. And now I just have this piece. Works the same way. Slide that back into place. And shrink it down. I think I missed some on this side. That's why it doesn't line up right. Yep. Okay. All right, so I'll use that duplicate uh, or extract a lot when I'm doing these kinds of surfaces that are joined together. Okay, um, poke face. So grab a face, poke, and it has this little triangle in the middle. Okay, uh, now you could pull that out. 
Essentially what this is doing is using the multi-cut, which I've shown, and going like this. And then I can grab the vertice and pull it out. That's exactly what I just did, okay? Um, sometimes we need those kinds of uh, shapes, so they created that poke. Let's delete that. And our last one in this menu, which is wedge. Now, obviously this is a lot of stuff. You're not gonna remember everything. Uh, but the idea is you've seen it, so you know where to at least go to it to uh, check it out. So I'm going to grab this face, and I actually have to switch to not face mode, I have to switch to multi, because I need to grab a face, there we go, and an edge, there we go, and I'm going to go to wedge. And that's what wedge does, is it just extrudes, but it extrudes it at this angle, and then you can control that angle and control the amount of divisions. So if you needed a character that had that kind of stuff, there you go. Um, I very rarely would use wedge unless I'm, you know, adjusting a already built model. Usually I'll just use a cylinder and go from there, like delete half of it or a quarter of it or whatever I need. Uh, but it definitely is handy. Uh, we don't need to worry about that yet or that yet. Let's close that. And mesh tools, let's jump here. Okay, just a couple tools um, that we really need to uh, look at. Okay, so we've looked at um, insert edge loops, right? So inserting edge loops. Check out the options because you can go in here and do multiple edges very easily. Reset the tool. Um, make hole, don't use that. I've never used that, don't use it. Multi-cut is, again, a great tool because we can click on this and kind of draw out the kind of shapes that we want. And they don't have to be in the center, I'm just kind of drawing it into position. And then when I get this shape and I'm happy with it, then I'm going to come back at some point and then just, you know, make sure the flow of the edges around it um, work. Okay, so that's multi-cut. Um, you can also use multi-cut for, you know, you have a specific kind of surface that is giving you not trouble, because we don't have trouble. Um, let's say that I want to break this. I want it to look like broken, okay? Uh, I'm not going to go outside of the software. I can use multi-cut and just click and drag. And what this is doing is it's cutting it all the way through that surface. So it's adding these divisions. So in some cases, you may want, like, let's say, a broken piece of glass. Like I have an old robot, and I want his screen to look like it's all shattered without me having to just, like, you know, f kind of fiddle with it myself. I just want to just do, like, random stuff. Okay, so that looks pretty random. Then I can go in here to faces and just kind of grab a collection of these. I'm going to hit shift greater than to grow that out. I'm going to shift marquee this, delete. And now I have this piece that's all like broken kind of organically versus, you know, um, doing it manually. And I can just still go through and delete some pieces out. And then I can extrude this. Now this is a specialized kind of piece. So this isn't something that we would, you know, we would need nice surface flow for um, unless you know, as we smooth it out, we're getting these chunky bits and we don't want those chunky bits, okay? So sometimes you'll even use this as a starting point to then build a, a shape on top of. Um, sometimes you need to just an edge loop in a certain spot and I'll use that just to cut across, okay? Hold shift, it'll keep it straight. Let's go to cylinder, cylinder, insert edge loop, okay. So there's the insert edge loop. Um, I'm gonna go to the offset edge loop tool. And I'm going to click and drag on this edge. And you'll see it allows me to basically add a um, offset to each one of these. So again, sometimes you want to use something like this. Um, notice here as I do this that it's bringing these in kind of like a weird position. Like this bottom one is a lot closer than that one. Okay. If I want these evenly positioned, most of the time you'll find an option in here. Um, tool completion, maintain position, there we go, equal distance. Okay, now it's equal distance. And edit, reset. Some of these have a reset button and some of these don't. I think it's when Autodesk took over, they just left it on the old software and added it in different spots. Um, that's good there. All right, so let's delete some stuff here. And we'll talk about uh, one more tool in here, which is the append. Okay, I kind of skipped over it. <clears throat> I want to show the other ones. Um, 
So a pen tool allows me to click on an edge. You'll see in here, if I get closer, you'll see a little pink, purple, diamond, triangle, arrow type thing. Um, that's telling me the direction, okay? Now you'll also notice down here a little dot. So that's also, again, telling me the direction. So I'm gonna click on this one, because that's the next one. And that goes here, so click on the next one, click on the next one, click on the next one, click on the next one. And you can see what this is doing is that it's going to fill in this hole. Uh, I made a boo-boo, I hit uh, backspace, click on that again, click on that, click on that, click on this. Now, you can probably say it quietly to yourself, but what tool does it look like it's kind of like acting like? If you said the uh, close hole tool, or fill hole, you're exactly right. Uh, Multi-cut. Oh, what happened there? Try that again. There we go. Now, it's not acting like that. Uh, in this instance, how I used it is. There we go. Uh, but I'm going to show the um, typical usage for something like this. Okay, so most of the tools that we're using are pretty decent tools. I hit three, make sure it looks nice, smooth, yes, good. Uh, most of the tools are pretty decent. They work you know, without a lot of hassle, uh, but sometimes you'll run into issues where they just don't work or they work with a lot of hassle. So let's say for instance here, I go into this and I go into that and I try to do a bridge, edit, bridge. Now this is going to work, okay, but let's pretend it didn't work. So I'm just going to hit undo and then just delete. Okay, so remember when I did bridge, it gave me this. So I would use the append tool and I would click on this edge, click on this edge. That creates that connection. I would hit Y or uh, enter and then click on this edge, click on that edge, hit enter, click on this edge, click on that edge, hit enter. And then hit enter. Okay, now it gives me those weird things. Jump to mesh display, soften harden, back to object mode, and there we go. Okay, so sometimes the tools don't work and you have to use the append. Sometimes you have a hole and you have to use the append. Sometimes you're uh, working here thinking you're deleting these faces when actually you've just deleted a whole bunch. And it might be, you know, a 15 undos back and you just have to go in there and just put that back in. Now, if you notice purple, that means that it's not closed. Okay, so I'm purposefully... Uh, not closing these off so we can see that, that even though I connected the opposite edges, I still miss that inside one. So I'm going to hit undo, click, follow the arrow, follow the arrow, then I'm going to jump across, and then hit Y. I'll do the same thing here. Click, follow the arrow, follow the arrow, arrow. And then I'm going to use multi-cut, and I will click you here, and click you there. Okay, and I do the same thing everywhere else. Okay, now um, let me go to my top view. Okay, this is the only tool that we've used so far that needs um, a specific di uh, direction. Okay, top view, front view, side view. Create polygon, this works pretty much like the append. It's the, actually the same tool, uh, but it allows you to create your own shapes. Okay, so here is a shape that I just created out of you know my mind, and then I can extrude it just like I would any other shape. Now, before I go extruding this, um, I like to make sure everything is quadded out first. So I'm going to go to my multi-cut and just make sure that, oops, let me turn that, um, oops, on that tool again. So reset that so we don't have that uh, keep flow. Okay, so there's a quad here that's four sides. That's four sides. Okay, so now I have this where I have, you know, one, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four. So if I were to go like this, even though this looks like it's four sides, it's not. It's actually five-sided because one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I have to hit undo or just grab this edge and control delete it. Oops, not control delete that one. Uh, and then we go back to multi-cut and then go here and then go there. Okay, so now this has one, two, three, four. And this one has four, this one has four, and that one has four. So this is a nice clean surface now. So now I can extrude. Oops. And now I don't have to worry about doing that to the top and doing that to the bottom because now they're all set up. It's nice and neat.
Okay. Um, and anything in here, I don't think it's anything in here I need to show. Nope, everything's good there. Okay, so that's a majority of the tools that we're going to use. Again, you're not going to use all of these all the time. Um, but when you're trying to attack a problem, when you're trying to figure out how to model something, uh, you shouldn't be limited by uh, an, uh, a lack of knowledge. Okay, um, it's kind of like you're building a house and you want to put nails in the wood, but you've never seen a hammer or heard of a hammer, so you're trying to do everything else except for pick up this thing that looks like a hammer and then use that, okay? So lots of tools that are in here that we can use. Uh, if you want more information on those, play with them. Look it up on YouTube. Uh, Maya has help files, if they work, right there. Find a menu, not find a menu, uh, Maya help, right there. Okay, and then you can look up each one of those in even more detail and see what they do. As you watch tutorials, as you look at other stuff, you'll see those tools used over and over and over and over and over again. So I hope that was informative and not a total waste of your time. Uh, and if it was, well, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed myself. So uh, I'll see you in the next one.